Tonight's for bringing is in honor of Yosh Zalman's birthday. He had his birthday last week. Let's begin by wishing Yosh Zalman. I don't know if you know, but everything that happens in the shul is connected to electric power. Some of it is electric because it's spiritual. Some of it's electric because it's physical. So definitely it's connected because through the physical, the spiritual works. And uh, Elio, Baruch Hashem, has been very kind to dedicate a lot of uh, time to make all the, the electric currents and the Wi-Fi happen. Mm-hmm. So it's chus for you and for all good. And it's really, really appreciated. Really appreciated. It's all... It's all, it's all uh, Whatever, even now we're learning at Taurus, and people are watching, it's because of you. Appreciate it. Okay, so there was, 1969, there was a chair, the chairman of the uh, young leadership in the United Jewish Appeal. His name was Gordon Zacks. Gordon Zacks um, was very respected because of his position, and he was invited to give the, this presentation about Jewish continuity. He said he spent six months working on his speech. He had some kind of an idea of investing, I think it was $100 million, to create some kind of endowment fund, so to try to figure out how to reach out to Jewish youth and how to inspire them. Rabbi Alevsky had some connection with this Gordon Zacks, and he um, told him after, a short while after his speech, that he said that he was invited to speak to the Rebbe. Gordon Zacks came to visit the Rebbe, and without making any small talk about uh, where, how his trip was, <laughs> and what's going on in his life, <laughs> and what are his plans, and what are his dreams, and how are you, the Rebbe began right away, going straight to the point. The Rebbe said, I read your speech, I see that you take care of your mind. I'm looking at you, I can see you take care of your body, but what about your soul? And then they Rebbe started talking about uh, there's a fire burning, meaning that young people are in danger. Do something to, to save the children. And they were asked him, among other things, a lot, very intricate conversation, but um, they were asked him if he believes in revelation, if he believes in the revelation of God at Mount Sinai where God gave us the Torah. So he said, I, I believe the Torah was inspired, but I don't believe that God writes every word. So the Rebbe... The Rebbe said to him, everyone went, went through the whole tapestry of the universe, from descri- describing the details of all creation, and, and, it, and it, repro- like, it was showing to him layer after layer how, how everything is woven in a, such an intricate pattern that it's impossible that it's going on by itself. This is, yeah. It's impossible that it's happening by itself, and there must be someone who is making it all happen. So then they were quoted Zorba the, the Greek. Anyone heard of Zorba the Greek? You heard of Zorba the Greek. They were called Zorba the Greek. It was it's, it's an interesting book of philosophy where um, Zorba is by this by by uh, the seashore and talking to his friend, and his friend says, "Zorba, what are all the you, you you read a lot, you know a lot. What are all those books you're reading? What do they help you? You don't really know the answers. There are lots of information, but what do you do with all the information?" So Zorba was telling us to to him. They were quoted Zorba the Greek. In this book, <laughs> and uh, and he didn't have much. He like agreeing to everything they were saying, and they were saying, "What do you? What would you say if I sent to you someone for a year to study with you?" They were said, "You're trying to to contain Hashem with your mind, but you can't contain Hashem with your mind. You can only connect to Hashem by with your heart through experience. I, I want you to give yourself a gift for a year to take a journey with me to your soul." And, to, and if, you, if this works, it's a gift of eternity. And if not, you've only wasted a year. But why, why don't you consider this? It was an hour and a half conversation, which really, really made an indelible impression on Gordon Zax's life. But the question for us tonight is how to really figure out what is indeed the sole mission that we have here in this world. This week, we're in the Torah about the wood gatherer. Torah says that after... The spies returned. Torah says a story about a man who was gathering wood in the desert. And because he was gathering wood, he was liable to death penalty. What's the death penalty for gathering wood? So mm-hmm. there, there, there's three opinions. One opinion is that he was doing ma'amir. You're not allowed to, out, to gather um, things on Shabbos that are um, twigs and branches and put them together in a pile. 
is a prohibition on Shabbos. It's part of the um, uh, way to create bread. It's one of the 49 forbidden acts on Shabbos. 39. 39, thank you. Mm -hmm. A second opinion is, he took the branches and he broke them out of the ground. He detached them from their source. Which is also one of the 39 forbidden acts on Shabbos. A third opinion is, it wasn't the gathering or breaking breaking off of its source. The problem was that he carried it outside. Not a carry on Shabbos. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what was this guy thinking? What was he trying to do? There's even a, a, a manager who makes a comment like God himself asked Moses, what was this guy thinking? <laughs> what was he trying to do? So there, is, there are many layers to every part of the story, but the Zohar says this. The Zohar says that the wood gatherer, he, was, he, took, to, he took the tree of life and the tree of knowledge and he measured them against each other and he was thinking which one of these is bigger. And he decided that the tree of knowledge is greater than the tree of life. How could he be measuring the tree of life and the tree of knowledge? That those, are, those were things that were in heaven. They're not on earth. So conceptually, he was thinking about the tree of life and the tree of heaven, and he was measuring them against each other. That's what the Zohar says. Now, everything the Torah itself tells us is a message in our lives. So what is the Torah telling us with this, with this guy, with the tree of life, the tree of knowledge? What does this mean for us? So... The tree of knowledge, it says in the Talmud, Rashi says, was a mixture, or the Torah itself actually hints to this idea, a mixture of good and evil. Things where there's a confusion, where there's good and evil mixed together, and you have to make a choice, and you have, and there's friction. You have to decide, do the right thing, and to overcome a challenge. That's the idea of the tree of, the tree of knowledge. The tree of life, on the other hand, is beautiful. Tree of Life is about an eternal bond with Hashem, an intimate bond, an electric bond, where you feel excited and passionate about what you're doing, and it's beautiful, and it's, and it's, and it's amazing. What's greater? Is it greater to be in a situation where you have to choose, you have to fight with this friction? Or is it better when you're, everything is wonderful and sweet and beautiful? Which one's better? There's a line in this week's Torah portion, when the spies came back from Israel, and they said, we won't be able to conquer the land, um, by the way, is it too hot in here? Should we put the, 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 the fans on? Yeah, I'm going to put the fans on. So, when the spies came back, thank you. The, um, the spies came back with this message. They said, we're all going to get killed. And the, and the Jewish people were, were, are so upset, they started to cry. And they said, our children will be destroyed. They emphasized the children. Why do they emphasize the children? So one explanation is like this. When God responded also, God said, the children that you said that are going to be destroyed, they're the ones who will inherit the land. What's, what's the emphasis on the children? Emphasis like this. It says in the Talmud that when a child eats food, most of it doesn't get eaten. He, he, he breaks it up into pieces. Uh, some of it's left on the floor. Speaking of which, I think there's an extra hamburger here that I don't think anyone's <laughs> planning to eat. Anyway, so... Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, so... so uh, but, but when adult eats, adult eats the whole entire, adult, adult eats the whole portion he served, but a child, he eats and he drops, doesn't eat everything. Is it worth it to go and daven when your davening is distracted? You're going to daven, but you're distracted. Is it worth it? Or is it not worth it? You're going to learn Torah, but you're distracted. Is it worth it or not worth it? So you could think, I'm like the child. The child eats and he drops stuff on the floor, and he's not really absorbing it. So if I'm going to daven, if I'm going to learn, and I'm going to be like the child who's eating the spiritual food of Torah, but I'm not really fully absorbing it, it's a waste of time. Should I or shouldn't I? That's a person might ask this question. And it's a legitimate question because we can't always have perfection in our davening, in our Torah study. Rarely do we feel, we're looking back at a davening, I don't we, but I, 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 I don't look back at every davening and say... Except you. Except for me, right? I'm just like Superman. But, but really, do we look back and say, you know what? Amazing, every word flowing, magic, angelic, <laughs> holy, beautiful, and intimate with the Creator Himself. And Moses and I were just, you know, it's not like that. <laughs> so the question is, is it worth it? So we have the answer from this. But this is this extra portion. Moshe Rabbeinu told them that God said, the children that you said will get destroyed, they're the ones who will inherit the land. 
You think you're davening like a child. You're eating and you're spitting out half the davening. You're saying, Mug and Avram, you're by Mug and Avram. <laughs> After Mug and Avram, you spit out, Machayim, Esam, Mekel, Kajan, Chinat, Das. And those brachas, you were in the middle of selling tea in China. And then you came back to Rafaeinu Hashem and Rafi, and you stopped for a second about your taxes. And then you came back to Baruch Alain, and you looked at your overdraft. The cop is shaped for God, you owe for tuition. And she was shaped, no, you have to send back the papers for your kids' camp. But la, malshinim, and the whole thing is all messed up. Is it worth, is it, worth it? Who, who benefits from all this? What's the point of it? So Moshe Rabbeinu tells us the name of God. Your children, you said, is a waste. Adarab, it's the opposite Hashem says. I'm going to give them the land of Israel forever. They're the ones who fulfill the purpose of creation. They're the ones who are going to bring Mashiach. That's what it's all about. That's the whole point. You think that's a waste? That's the point. It's crazy. Because we, we, we know it doesn't, doesn't look good. But Hashem says that's the point. People of Chelm... It's a, it's a true and inspirational message that just like if most of their food is wasted, you know, even if most of our people is wasted, it's, it's very significant, it's very inspirational message. But how do we get that message? How do we, how do we drive it from the fact that the, pe- the, the people said our children... Um, like we're all us, how do we drive Because how do we, how when they came, I'll tell you, very, I, I, I thank you for mentioning, I, I, I didn't explain. When they came to Israel, they were, they were not, no longer going to be ensconced in the cloud. No, they're no longer going to be surrounded in this angelic atmosphere with the manna bread from heaven and, and the water from the rock of Miriam. They're going to have to start working for a living. And therefore they thought when they come, came to Israel, they're diving, their learning's going to be all messed up. Mm-hmm. And therefore they said, well, our children will be destroyed. Our, our, our diving will be like children. Mm-hmm. And they responded to them, and they said, you, th- you think it's messed up, but on the contrary, that is eternity. That's what perfection looks like in the eyes of Hashem. That's what, that's what happiness looks like from Hashem's perspective. People of Chelm had this big discussion. They, tr- they were argued for half a year trying to figure this out. What is greater, the light of the sun or the light of the moon? What's, what's, what's greater light? So they came to the conclusion, light of the moon is greater. <laughs> Why? Because the sun gives off light by day. What's the big deal to give light by day? <laughs> you lie off when it's dark. That's a chiddush. That's something special. There's a beautiful word from the Dumna Magid. It says in the Pasuk, Am zu li This nation Hashem said I created for my sake, they will say my praises. That's one verse. The nan- next verse says, Hashem says, um, you, have, you have wearied me. Le'oisi karasi yakev. You got to be so. You have not called me, Hashem says. You have not called me. Why? Because you have been weary with me. It says Dumna Magad explains what this Pasuk is talking about. You haven't called me, you have wearied with me. What, what, what is he, what's the Pasuk saying? He explains a Meridika thing. It's an amazing thing. What does he say? He has a, Dumna Magad, everything he said was with a parable. Here's his parable. There was a wealthy man. And he went to a hotel. And he got a, it was no, no elevators in those days, but he got the, the penthouse suite, the best suite in the hotel on the fifth floor. And he tells the attendant, you know, I left my, my uh, valise, I left my luggage downstairs, so you got my luggage. So Yankel goes to bring him his luggage. Yankel huffs and puffs and brings the luggage up the five flights of stairs, and he looks at him, and he says, it's not mine. He says, how do you know it's not yours? You didn't even open it. How do you know it's He says, my luggage isn't so heavy. Well, you're huffing and puffing, it must be, it's not mine. I had diamonds, and my, and my luggage is diamonds. Similar way, Hashem says, if you're getting so, if you're huffing and puffing so much, if you're not enjoying it so it means you're not, you're, not, you're, not, you're not talking to me. You're not, it's not mine. What I gave you, Hashem says, is geshmak. What I gave you is diamonds. If it's, so, if it's making you so crazy, you're not, you're not really getting into it. But how do we get into it? So Hashem gave us the tree of life and gave us the tree of knowledge. During the week, it's the tree of knowledge. It's a mixture of good and evil. And there's, and there's confusion. And there's all these choices you have to make. And on Shabbos, Hashem gives us more. Hashem reveals to us more. It's like the tree of life. We're able to feel a deeper bond with Hashem. The Maral says the center of the week is Shabbos. Three days before Shabbos, the Torah says, our preparation for Shabbos. Three days after Shabbos, our continuation of Shabbos. So the whole, the center of every week is Shabbos. The Baal Shem Tev says that the more you prepare for Shabbos, the more you experience Shabbos. The more that, in order for Shabbos to impact the rest of the week, as you, with your preparation for Shabbos, if you really, really prepare for Shabbos the whole week, you're thinking about what you can do for Shabbos, and you make Shabbos very special, then Shabbos has much more of an impact on the rest of the week. It says in Chachma, if a person made a mistake during the week, it's like, it's like you got something stuck on you. You you're, you're like went into a muddy place. And then Shabbos, you do tshuva, 
you, you, you release it, you, you let go of it. It, it, it cleanses you. There's a comparison also between Shabbos and days of the week, though, to a tree and its roots, to the branches and the leaves of the tree and its roots. The tree needs to have oxygen, needs to have water, needs to have nutrients from its roots. Shabbos is the roots. Shabbos is the roots for the entire week. It's where we get our power to do what we need to do. But what's the purpose of Shabbos? The purpose of creation is to bring the holiness of Hashem into the mundane. So the, the, we need to also have the leaves. We need to also have the branches where the oxygen comes from. So it's a kind of like, you know, when you go swimming and, and, and you need to like come up for air and like breathe in and like get some energy to continue swimming. So Shabbos is when you, when you come up for air and if you have a big week, you have a lot of things going on, you need to have a big Shabbos. So, so the mistake of the wood gatherer, what was his mistake? He said... The tree of knowledge is better. That's true. It's true. But he says, I don't want the tree of life. In other words, I don't like these spies who come back and they say that we have to stay in the desert. They're wrong. He, I see they're wrong. Hashem was upset with that, that idea of going to the desert and staying away from the world. The tree of life, reality, is the wrong way of living. Hashem wants us to be a tree of knowledge, be involved in the creation and the physical. That's what his idea was. I've learned this story well. That's what the Torah says. <laughs> Who were the daughters of Tzlovchar? The ones who cherished the land of Israel and got a portion of the land of Israel. They learned from their father. Their father loved the mission of Hashem. Their father loved this idea of let's go into the world and be involved in the world. Who needs a tree of life? That's not what Hashem wants. But it's a mistake. Why is it a mistake? Because you can get into the tree of knowledge, not the tree of life. We need to have the tree of life. Not just the tree of life on Shabbos, but every day when we say Hayom Yom, what do we say? Today is the first day of... Shabbos. Day the second day of Shabbos. Third day of Shabbos. Why are we saying that? Because we want to draw into the mundane, the physical, the Shabbos. When you, there, be, be, uh, Shammai, be Hillel, and you see something during the week, you're supposed to dedicate it for Shabbos. Why? You're supposed, you're supposed to connect and bring the holiness of Shabbos to every day. And not just with things, but also you have to have an island of time every single day that's like you, it feels like Shabbos. That you don't answer the phone, you don't answer anything else, and for you it's mamish like Shabbos, and you're literally with Hashem, you're studying Torah, you're davening, and everything's off. You have an island, you need to have that island every single day. Without that island every day, you can't do the rest of your day. You have to start off your day with the island of Shabbos. Every day has to have the island of Shabbos. And that was a mistake of the, of the guy gathering the wood. He had three mistakes. One opinion was he gathered into a pile. Second opinion is his mistake was he tore things off from the root. What did he tear off from the root? He was saying, we don't have to have the tree of of." of the source of the week, the source of our energy is from, is from Shabbos. The source of who we are, like the Rabbi told Gordon Zacks, you're taking care of your body, what about your soul? You need to connect to what, what's, what's really, what you're really about. But the, the guy who's Mekoshesh hates him, Mekoshesh, he felt, let's put it all together. What Mekoshesh means to put things together. Let's put together the tree of life. Tree of knowledge. Why make the separation? Why make this dichotomy, this dissonance? Hashem wants a home in the world. Why make this special day? Stop. And he had a point, but it was a mistake, because you can't do it. He said, let's put all the days of the week together. Let's put them all together. Let's detach the days of the week from their source in Shabbos. Let's, just, let's treat all days the same. And this third, their third opinion is, that what was his mistake? His mistake was he was carrying in a public domain. The world's like a public domain. Why is the world like a public domain? Because you, the world feels like there are many forces in the world. You feel there's one force... SB, SB, what's global, what they're called? SB. SBC. I'm missing, I'm mixing SBC. the SBA loan with the SBC, which both are very gastronistic of things. Yeah? So, SBA, SBC, CBS, NBC, <laughs> C, whatever, whatever it is. You look at those things, and it feels in many forces. What's the MS? The MS is the world's Roshusa Yachl Chidachin The world's just a, a, it's just one domain that belongs to the singular reality of the world. Essay in El Aharim. Very good. Hmm. Lift our eyes up to the mountains. May of Yezri. Lifting our eyes up to the mountains. We can look down at our phones, look at all different forces. <laughs> or on Shabbos, we lift our eyes upwards. The Harim, the Harim, the mountains mean Tzadikim. Why are there mountains referred to, to Tzadikim? Because of, when the mountains are far away, they look like they're very small. The closer you get to a mountain, the more you realize how great it is. When you're far away from a Tzadik, you don't realize the value of his message. The closer you get to a tzaddik, the more you realize how great the tzaddik is and how his message is so relevant. 
And so in order to be able to, to go into the world, you need to have Shabbos, you need to have Rishus Hayach, you need to feel on Shabbos, the world's elevated and the world feels on Shabbos more like it's Rishus Hayach. But the Makai Shashayt is like, what do you need that for? Hashem wants a home in the lowest realm. So it's a very powerful message here. The message is that we have to, uh, indeed, we have to focus on the mission of, of being involved in the world. But at the same time, we can't forget our song. So we'll conclude with one story. The Baal Shem Tev said the following story. There was once a king who was walking around and he uh, saw people gathering around the shepherd. The shepherd was playing this beautiful tune. So the king wanted to see what was a beautiful tune. He listened to this, wow, Miritika tune, amazing tune. The king went back to the palace. He wanted to hear the, the tune again. So he asked the Samas Royal Orchestra, play the niggin. <laughs> what niggin? Hum a few bars, we'll play the niggin. I don't remember the niggin, there was a niggin, the shepherd. Uh, so the king is upset and he puts out newspaper advertisements. Everyone should tell him the king the niggin. Whoever knows the niggin should tell the king the niggin. And nobody can tell the king the niggin. You have to tell you one more thing. It's very relevant. Because it's, it's worth listening to. Today, this week I met Yankel. So what happened the king w- was very upset because he couldn't get his niggin. In a similar way, we, with this, in this world, we have all kinds of things we try to get to satisfy this so- story of Shabbos. Our soul is Shabbos. On Shabbos we meet our soul. But we try to, instead of getting in touch with our soul, who we really are, we try to satisfy that with getting more likes on Facebook, with by getting more money, by getting more, more things. But really, it's, it's, a, it's you're obfuscating what our souls are really looking for, which is the reality of the Eivishter. We're looking for the Nigan, we're looking for the Mitzvah, but we, we try to, we, we get confused. This, so I went this week, Yankel. Yankel was telling me how upset he is in his life. He's so, he's so comfortable. He has everything that a person could want, and yet he feels so dissatisfied. Because, why is he dissatisfied? Because he has all the physical things, but you know what? That's not him. And he's not religious at all. He doesn't keep, keep any of the mitzvahs that he knows of. But of course, every Jew is full of mitzvahs. He doesn't keep anything he knows of. And yet he feels so upset and he's crying because he, he knows there's something missing. Something missing. So, we're supposed to learn from the story of Slavcha, the story of, of Mukesh Shetzim is, it's a real, it's a, and the story of Gordon Zaks, is to pay attention to our neshama, to pay attention to our Shabbos, and, and to every day to de- dedicate some time of the day to make it Shabbos thick. And through that, we're able to get this this direction in our lives to know to know who we are and what, what, what our direction is. Our direction is to get to the day which is all Shabbos. The Yom Shukul is Shabbos. The coming of Mashiach Zakeinu. Karim Amish. Amen. Any questions or comments or criticism? Tomatoes? Cucumbers? Let's say L'chaim for uh, Eliyosh Zalman. Birthday. And L'chaim. L'chaim